It's a typical Arctic afternoon in Bloomington, Minnesota, except that on this particular Sunday, two teams will meet to decide the championship of the National Football League's National Conference. Amidst the elements of fire and ice are the hometown Vikings and the Sunshine Boys from Los Angeles. The Rams, who will try to pretend the shivering 14 degree temperatures have no effect on them. But the hard fact is that the Rams have never won a postseason game in a cold weather city, while they have lost six. At stake for them is the unusual opportunity of becoming virtually the home team in Super Bowl XI in Pasadena's Rose Bowl two weeks hence. The Vikings will be aiming for an unprecedented fourth Super Bowl visit and their third in the last four years. To do it, they bring to this game their usual superb defense and special teams. But the difference in Minnesota this year is an explosive attack to match their other attributes. On the game's first series of downs, Minnesota's famed but aging Purple Gang showed their stuff by swiftly clamping down on the Rams' running attack and forcing a pass on third and long. Rookie quarterback Pat Hayden tried to duck the Purple pressure, but was wrestled to the ground by number 81, 13-year veteran defensive end Carl Eller for the first big defensive play in a game that promised to have many. But on their next offensive series, the Los Angeles ground game began to click. Led by John Capaletti and Lawrence McCutcheon, the Rams sustained a time-consuming 13-play drive that brought them to the Minnesota one. The big play was a reverse to Ron Jesse on which everyone wearing Rams horns insisted the speedy receiver had scored. This was the first of the three consecutive plays crucial to the outcome of this championship game. For with the ball lying on the Vikings' six-inch line, Pat Hayden tried a quarterback sneak on third down, but came up short. Again, Los Angeles thought they had scored, but the fans in the stands signaled the true outcome of the play. A repeat shows number 58, 13-year linebacker Wally Hilgenberg hitting Hayden at the apex of his dive, and the Rams faced a fourth and goal situation. Here, coach Chuck Knox opted for three points, but the center snap was a bit high, and Nate Allen got in to block the kick, which bounced right into the happy hands of number 20, Bobby Bryant. 90 yards later, Minnesota had the first touchdown of this championship game. This was the 14th block kick for the Vikings this season, and Nate Allen has been the man most of the times. It takes guts to stick your face in front of a kick, the little cornerback said after the game. It takes 10 men to hold a crazy man down, and I'm the crazy man. I got a good start, and the holder was slow putting the ball down. I blocked it with my chest. It bounced right, and Bobby just picked it up in stride. In the second game of the season, when these two teams played to a 10-10 tie, it was a block of a Dempsey field goal by Nate Allen that preserved the tie for Minnesota. The next Sunday, Allen blocked a conversion, and the Vikings beat the Lions 10-9. Thus began the habit of blocked kicks that reached a crescendo today against the Rams. Rams were down by seven points, and the decision by their coach to go for three points instead of six had proved disastrous. But Los Angeles wasn't giving up. Using their highly honed ground game to perfection, and running mostly at 17-year veteran Jim Marshall, with an occasional quick out pass for variety, the Rams again chewed up Viking real estate at a steady rate.
But again, just when they were closing in on a score, Los Angeles coughed up the ball. Early in the second quarter, Jim Marshall gained a measure of revenge by swatting Hayden's third down pass into the end zone. Forced upon Rusty Jackson dropped the ball and Matt Blair came storming through to give the Vikings their second block kick of the game. We weren't supposed to block it, Blair said later. We were playing for a return, but I had the feeling I should go in. Luckily, Jackson dropped the ball and that gave me the extra time. Minnesota got three points out of the blocked punt to bring the score to 10 to nothing. But again, the Rams came right back on the ground. But when Hayden went to the air, the results were different. Bobby Bryant made a diving interception to give his team the ball near midfield. And with this impetus, Minnesota put on their first offensive display of the game. Up to now, the Vikings had been held to a single first down and had done absolutely nothing on offense despite the fact they had a 10-point lead. In fact, when the first half was over, Minnesota would show merely five first downs and the miserly total of 89 net yards for an entire half of football. The Vikings' best and only drive of the half ended with number 85 Jack Youngblood sacked Tarkenton to give the Rams a small measure of satisfaction this half. The publicized duel between the Minnesota quarterback and the Rams' all-pro defensive end was a no-love-loss battle that was worth watching throughout the entire game. The final play of the first half symbolized everything that had gone before it as Hayden unloaded a bomb to Ron Jesse. The Comet from Kansas made a great catch in front of Nate Wright that resulted in a 43-yard play. But it was all for naught. Time had run out for Los Angeles in a half that saw them outplay the Vikings in every conceivable aspect except for block kicks on the scoreboard. The Rams went into the locker room trailing the Vikings. Tarkenton had been only mildly effective. Chuck Foreman had been heard from not at all. The Ram defense had done everything it could have dreamed of doing, but Minnesota had the Rams by 10 points at halftime. The Ram defense had been splendid in the first half, allowing just 89 total yards. And it was up to Jack Youngblood and company to see that the 10 to nothing deficit that had been no fault of theirs got no worse. But in this pursuit, they failed. On the second play of the third quarter, Chuck Foreman broke off a 62 yard run, exactly double the yardage that he had amassed in the entire game when the two teams met earlier in the year. Foreman was tackled on the one, but two plays later he went in standing up, and the Vikings lead ballooned to 17 to nothing just two minutes into the second half. At this point in the game, the Vikings looked like they might make a runaway of it, as the purple defense held the Rams without a first down on their first series of the half, and handed the ball over to Fran Tarkenton on the Ram 45-yard line. Tarkenton put together a bits and pieces drive that reached the Rams 16, but then did a very un-Tarkentonian thing when he passed into the corner of the end zone right into the hands of Monty Jackson. For 
Tarkenton, the careless interception was highly uncharacteristic, as was his entire day, passing for less than 100 yards until late in the fourth quarter. Instead, it was Pat Hayden who started to find the range, and he did it in such a manner as to make one think that Fran Tarkenton had switched teams and was wearing number 11 for the Los Angeles Rams. This time, the Rams, number 30, Lawrence McCutcheon in particular, were not to be denied. McCutcheon's score pumped new life into the Rams, for it had been a brilliant effort as he literally ran over Paul Krause, number 22, and number 23, Jeff Wright at the goal line, and brought the score to 17 to 6. But Tom Dempsey missed the extra point, a point that would loom very large as the remainder of the game unfolded. On the Vikings' next series, watch number 89 at the bottom of the screen, Fred Dreyer, as he beats Steve Riley and beats a path to Tarkenton. The ball bounced directly to Dreyer's defensive end partner, Jack Youngblood, who carried to the Viking eight. And an end zone look at the play reveals the reason for Tarkenton's fumble. He had his back to Dreyer the entire time and simply never saw him coming. The Rams had a big break and Hayden capitalized hitting Harold Jackson from the five yard line with a touchdown that brought the Rams to within four points. On the play, penalty flags were thrown as number 25, Nate Allen, was called for interference and a look at the play from up top reveals why. Hayden threw quickly while Allen was still giving Jackson a bump. He was not expecting the ball to be thrown so soon and a bump with the ball in the air is pass interference. Allen was so thoroughly beaten by the play that even pass interference couldn't keep Jackson from the catch. Now trailing just 17 to 13, the Rams were charging and the Los Angeles defense kept on the heat. Aside from Foreman's foray, the Vikings would total just 50 yards in the remainder of the third period and for 12 and a half minutes of the fourth. Tarkenton was chased all over the field as he completed only three passes for 19 yards and went down two times as the Ram defense completely stifled the Viking offense during most of the second half. The game would come down to three Los Angeles possessions from good field position. But lost in the great play of the Ram defense was the fact that there was another defense out on the field. And the proud old Purple Gang came up tough on each series. They squashed the Rams' first chance when Hayden tried to run for it on a third and nine. And was put down hard by Wally Hilgenberg and Jeff Wright, four yards short of a drive sustaining first down. The first Ram drive ended inside the Viking 35, but due to the missed extra point, a field goal did Los Angeles no good, and they were forced to punt rather than go for the tying score. After holding Minnesota first downless once more, Hayden began the second Ram thrust with a pass to Ron Jesse. The Rams would again get inside the Minnesota 35, but on a third down, Wally Hilgenberg, number 58, blitzed, was not touched, and again put Hayden down hard. A 
look at Hilgenberg's hit from the end zone reveals that because he was not blocked, Hilgenberg had a full head of steam when he crashed into Hayden's blind side. So for a second time, Minnesota's proud old pros had held, but so did Los Angeles. Hayden this time drove the Rams to the Vikings 39. And on fourth down, Hayden spotted Jesse behind Nate Wright. Both Jesse and Hayden must have thought they had finally broken through. But from out of nowhere came Bobby Bryant. The interception was the type that free safety Paul Krause usually makes from his center field position. This time, however, Bryant, a cornerback, had left his man and saved the Vikings. Looking at the play from Pat Hayden's point of view reveals how disappointed and surprised he must have been, for Jesse surely does look open and touchdown bound. Bryant had made what to Hayden and the Rams must have seemed like an unbelievable play and the perfect bookend to go with his 90-yard run in the first half. Bobby Bryant had started the Vikings off on the road to victory and now had seemingly preserved that win if the Vikings' sputtering offense could chew up the remaining two and one-half minutes. The Viking offense did better than that. On a third and four from their own 30, Tarkenton spotted Chuck Foreman the fourth receiver he looked for over the middle and Foreman did the rest. On the 57 yard play, Foreman injured his back, but he had done his job with 200 yards of total offense, 150 of that in the second half, and catching and carrying the key pass that set up Sammy Johnson's clinching touchdown from the 12 yard line. Johnson's touchdown brought the score to an insurmountable 24 to 13 with half a minute to go. And he and Tarkenton and the rest of the Vikings hopped merrily off to their fourth try at a Super Bowl victory. One last piece of business remained. The Rams had fought hard and well, and even though defeat was imminent, they went down trying to the end. But Rob Scribner's lateral was intercepted by number 59, Matt Blair. And the Vikings were champions of the National Football Conference. For the Rams, it was one more frustrating defeat at the hands of the Vikings. Their 11th loss in 12 tries in Minnesota. A Viking victory that catapulted them into Super Bowl XI and a chance to end their years of frustration. This will be their fourth time in the Super Bowl, an NFL record. But the Vikings hold one other Super Bowl record. Their three losses are also the most by any team. The Vikings have now appeared in four conference championship games and won them all. It is an unparalleled achievement, but to the Vikings an achievement that means much more because of the fact that they now have a chance to end the years of almost by winning a Super Bowl. Bud Grant said that this Viking team is the most emotional he has had, and this new element is what the team needed and must carry into Super Bowl XI if they are to win it. For the Rams, the NFC Championship game is getting to be a real downer. Their 24-13 loss to the Vikings marked the third straight season that the Los Angeles Rams have come within one game of reaching the Super Bowl. Instead, the Minnesota Vikings are in it again. One game from the greatest victory in their proud history.